Greetings, Africa. This is Jerry Moyazungu. Welcome to Jailbreak Africa. So this is a program which is centered on how we can try to dis- demystify why is that Africa is still behind? Why is that Africa is still suffering? Why is that uh, we don't have a lot of billionaires in Africa? We don't have a lot of millionaires in Africa. We've got poverty around us in Africa. So Jailbreak Africa, we want to see how we can actually emancipate the mindset of Africans. So today I'm joined by Andrew Macheka, Tichakunda, Andrew Macheka, who is the managing partner at a company called M&J. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you very much, Mr. Jerry. How are you doing? How are you living? I'm very well, and yourself? Okay, I'm okay. So great. So I was just thinking, and I noticed that most of the Africans are a bit hesitant to, like, let's see, let's first talk about, I noticed that you guys are into, we are saying we want to build timeless businesses. And there's no way we can build a timeless business without uh, preparing the groundwork or the foundation. For example, the issue of the trust. Have you ever noticed, why is that black people are hesitant in terms of registering trust from your observation and your experience? And also, if you are interacting with owners of the company, how much percentage doesn't have family trust? Uh, I, I will give an example even for our clients that we're dealing with. Exactly. You find that about 90% don't have family trust. Exactly. The reason being they are so hesitant, they think that if you put your assets in the family trust, they are tied up. And the cease is to be yours. The cease is to be yours. So, <laughs> yeah, because right now, looking at our economy, some people, they want to do things quickly. They might want to sell the property anytime. Mm. So they'll be so hesitant. Ah, why should I put it now? Maybe I'll put it later. And then there are other um, clients or other cl- uh, customers who will say, okay, I'm still small. But you find that the person who is saying, I'm still small, they have maybe two, three properties, but they will be saying, ah, maybe later on when I have more properties. That's when I think of trust. Mm. Okay, what about, let us first start for the sake of our audience and the sake of our viewers. What's a family trust? Okay, a family trust, it's an estate planning tool, um, which is set up by a founder. Mm. A founder or a donor, mm. it, 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 for the benefit of the beneficiaries. Mm. So it involves three parties. We have a founder, mm. we have a trustee, mm. we have beneficiaries. Mm. So you find that the founder uh, works with the trustees so that they are able to uh, make sure that this family trust can benefit the beneficiaries. Okay. Yes. Okay, so probably for the sake of uh, these guys, uh, of yours, mm. I would also want to ask again, because mm. some people, they might not know what estate planning is. Okay. Probably, I think from my two cents, what I know is probably, it, it, it's just, in we are setting up an organization, because it's a legal person, isn't it? Yes, it's a Which legal person. Which means it can be sued, it can also sue on its own. So you are, you are kind of protecting yourself as well from creditors, yeah, uh, uh, protecting yourself, even from your family as well. Yes. Because when you die, when you are not available, when you are incapacitated, or people, critters, they are coming after you, you can easily hide behind a trustee, a, a family trust. But why is that uh, we've got more family trusts registered by the white people rather than the black people? Guys, I'm not being racist, but that's a fact. Uh, even if we are to look at our grandfathers or our fathers, yeah, uh, they are used to say a will. Uh, uh, did they write wills? Okay. Uh, uh, well, our fathers. <laughs> uh, our fathers, do they even write wills? Well, some they do write wills. Yes, mostly they How don't. Uh, there are a few. <laughs> mostly they don't. Okay. Usually, you find that when someone is owning properties, mm-hmm. when they pass away, you hear that, uh, okay, this person is gone with all his stuff. Exactly, Maybe exactly, exactly. Maybe he was involved in some rituals or anything. Exactly. Like we which, noticed the, the bus companies, yes. you took off your... Your mungas, I think of a lot of companies. A lot, yes. When of the guy, which, the founder dies, he dies with him. Yes. Mm. Of which sometimes it would be maybe lack of succession planning, proper okay. succession okay. planning, okay. which would be put in place. So how can a family, well, so a family trust is going to help someone with succession planning as well? How? A family trust, it actually helps. Because like you find that you, you're looking at your family, you want to involve your children. 
and your grandchildren. Mm. If I'm going to have a company, a company should be a going concern. Okay, yeah, yeah. It should move from one generation to the other. Mm. So if I'm looking at a family trust, I want to involve my beneficiaries, the children mm. and the grandchildren. Mm. So if they are going to be part of the family trust, they also have to be part of the, the business, mm. one way or the other. Yes. Because if you are going to die, uh, you wouldn't want someone, an external person, just to run the company and the, the family is not even involved. At least you want one or two children to be involved, or mm. even the all of them exactly. to be involved, to, to know what is happening. They must, they must, they must not have uh, uh, much detail about what is happening in the company. But, but they at must least have control. they must have control of the business. Okay. Because yes. sometimes I've noticed, uh, I think uh, when I was doing consultants, I, 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 I encountered a situation whereby one of the doctors, he was married to a, another colored uh, pharmacist. Then they'd managed to actually establish. So this guy founded a, a, a surgery, a, a, pharma, a pharmacy, and had also a medical equipment company. I still I don't still remember another company which he owned. So what happened is uh, he gave his uh, two children 25 shares, 25 shares each. Then he gave uh, his wife another 25% which simply meant that he remained with 25%. Okay, this young young children is too young, so sweet in the 90s. So, first of all, in the, in the 2000, late 2000s, thereabouts, uh, he separated with the mother, and the kids went away with the mother. Then, uh, just after two years, the guy was actually surprised that these guys, they went and they sit into their board meeting. Remember, when you, when you vote 75%, you constitute a quorum. So they decided to vote their father out of the company, which means they they took over control, 100% control of the three other companies. And they resolved to give the father uh, the remaining one company, which was not performing very well. And which meant that this guy lost all his companies, which he had worked for, for over 30 years. In, in a blink of an eye, because why he had... So what could he have done for him to secure himself? Because you see, sometimes we think that probably we are protecting ourselves against our extended family, be it other siblings, be it uh, long-distance relatives, but here he was hit by his own sons and his own wife. What could have he have done for him to avoid this kind of scenario? Okay. Uh, a family trust is ideal, mm. but you find that even if you are setting up your company, it needs to be structured the proper way. Exactly. Because if the moment I want to involve my children, I need to consider, okay, uh, I'm looking at a future, the going concern yes. of the business. Yes. So you find that if you have a family trust, you can put them in a family trust as beneficiaries. But the family trust is so flexible that you can actually customize your terms that you want in the family trust. That, okay, I have these children, uh, they are going to benefit in this business, they are beneficiaries, and then uh, at a certain age, maybe if they reach a certain age of 25 or 28, they are able to be trustees and also make a decision to guide this trust. But you can even go further by saying, okay, in the case that maybe if I'm going to divorce with my wife, she can cease to be a trustee. You can specify that, such that uh, your business... Uh, properties can be managed very well. So you can put all the terms that you want. So the, you find that the family trust can actually own uh, the company. It can be a shareholder because a shareholder, it cannot only be individuals only. Mm. You can have a company to own a company. You can have a family trust mm -hmm. to own a company. Mm. So you, should, you are supposed to set a family trust. Yeah. Then the family trust was supposed to be the shareholder of the company. Mm. Then you find that it could be him and uh, the wife or someone else who can be a trustee. Okay. Yes. Who can be a director, I mean, in the company. Okay. Yes. So how was it how was it going to help him? So let's say he has managed to set up a trust mm. then the trust is not owning shares in the company. How, how was the scenario going to be different compared to him spreading all the shares, thinking that he's spreading love to the family, but what is he was spreading his funeral? Because he died after six months. Okay, because with the issue of uh, shareholding, even if you have one percent, you are going to give your child one percent. Yeah, the company law, exactly. as of uh, the company's uh, the company law, which was introduced twenty twenty. Exactly. Yes, you find that it's protecting minority shareholders. 
Mm-hmm. Even uh, a share with 1% or 2%, they are protected. You cannot remove them. You cannot remove them. You cannot wake up and say, because I'm the one who contributed much in the business. Because so, you find that the, we have cases whereby there are those companies whereby there are two partners. Mm-hmm. One has got 50, the other one has got 50%. Mm-hmm. But one of the partners is the one who is contributing everything. The other so, one is just there probably by virtue of being married. Yes. Or he's just a friend or probably just a relative or a sibling. Okay. Oh. Yes. And we also have cases whereby you find that other companies, they were formed because they were misled that, okay, two people are required. Yes, they are required, but those two people can be directors. And then one person can actually own 100% in a company. Okay. Yes. So if you are not sure now, because yes, you gave someone 50%, but then later on, there's a dispute which arises. Okay. You want to remove that person. Uh-huh. You cannot just wake up and say, okay, I contributed everything. So I'm just removing you, which simply means that you have to pay that person for you to remove him from your company. There is need for a resolution, and which must be guy, signed by And this guy parties. is never going to sign because you haven't given him your dues. Eh? Yes. His dues. Yes. Okay. So that would be, be, that would be tricky because it can also affect even the person who's going to do those papers. Okay. He can go to jail. So... If if I may if I may also ask on the issue of uh, uh, this first scenario, I've also noticed uh, something which recently happened to one of my clients. I like him so much. Uh, what happened was uh, he he is married. They love each other according to what we saw on Facebook. But uh, just probably I think that was last year, but one disaster strike whereby he noticed that his wife. Uh, was cheating and he caught the wife red handed. And uh, after doing that, we came to my office seeking for advice. And I say to him, Okay, fine, I'm going to give you advice, but um, I would like to know more about how you had structured your company. Then I noticed that no, he had actually gave uh, the wife 50% of the shares, and also he had also his properties when Mr. and Mrs. Uh, you know what happens with us black people. Uh, we get into love to the extent that you put Mr. and Mrs., which is not uh, wrong, but it's okay according to, 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 to the culture. But uh, what happened, to cut this long story short, uh, when he came to my office, he said, I want to divorce the wife. Then I said to him, okay, let us look at the structure. Then I told him openly that if you're going to divorce this wife, you're getting into trouble because you're going to lose 50% of what you worked for. And also, let's say if your wife also won in the courts, it's going to take what belongs to her by the virtue of get, having shares. But it's going to also get uh, what belongs to her by virtue of also being married and they've wedded. So I said, are you prepared to lose uh, everything? Then what I noticed, he was emotional. He was um, angry, but what I noticed is the divorce never happened. So what could have he done? Uh, This is a practical scenario. This is a a story which actually happened. What could have been done uh, for him to be secured, probably using a trust? Let's say starting with his houses, which had put in Mr. and Mrs., going to the company, which had put shares you know, I don't know. There's this norm whereby if people are married, they give uh, each other 50-50. I don't know who puts that rule, but I noticed that most of the company is always 50-50. How could they have actually protected themselves? Okay, this is a scenario which had happened already. <laughs> the shares are already there. Exactly. So the husband was supposed to talk to the wife. Yeah. Uh, mutually. Uh, but remember, these guys, they are now... They are now if he, if the wife was caught rendered. Okay. Yeah. So is there mo- is there mo- okay? What yeah. was supposed to, you find yeah. that the best way to protect was through a family trust. Exactly. But in this case, you find that for you to say I'm going to divorce you, the wife is going to go away with fifty percent. Exactly. So and she never contributed anything. Yes. Besides her being married. Yes, and they have children together. Exactly. But at the end, whatever we have, we want the children to benefit. Exactly. So there's need for a family trust. But in order to move these assets to family trust, they have to agree, both of them. So the husband was supposed to talk to the wife mm. that, look, the, we have these properties, we have these shares, but what we are doing is we need our children to benefit. Mm-hmm. 
So they were supposed to transfer their shares. They have to be owned by a family trust. Mm. They were supposed to register a family trust. Mm. Then they transfer the ownership to the family trust. Mm. And the family trust it to be having the beneficiaries. And the beneficiaries, these are the children. Mm. They will be there as the trustees. Such that in terms of the property side, it's owned by the, by the family trust. Okay. Okay. So if they had done that, if we had done that, if we divorced the wife, what was going to happen? So someone will say, what will happen? I've read those uh, questions whereby some, someone will say, yes, as much as I've put my wife in the trust, what will happen if I divorce her? Okay, if you divorce your wife, now it comes to the terms. Because when you're drafting the family trust, you need to put the terms specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also heard that you can even say, if you're going to cheat, it yes. simply means that you're never going to benefit anything. From you're not going stuff. to benefit anything. And also you can even specify further that they're saying, okay, I want the kids that you are going to have, just me and my wife only. That means if the wife is going to have another child with someone else, that they don't is, benefit. They don't benefit. Okay. So you can specify that. Okay. If I'm going to have a side chick and we have another child on a side, I'm not going to benefit. Okay. So these are one these are some of the terms that can be specified in the what I also hear that you can even say for the next four years, next four generations, <laughs> or next hundred years, no one is going to sell my property. Yes. If you want to benefit, my relatives will stay in my property. Yes. You can even even uh, specify further. Let's say you have three children. You want the leadership to rotate among the three generations of the children. You can actually specify that, okay, in terms of uh, leading the company, the CEO is going to start from the first born. Later on, it's going to go to the second born, third born. Okay. So whatever you want, you can actually specify. Interesting. So another scenario. Uh, you know, I, I always hear these stories and I encounter these stories. When that was 2018, if I'm not mistaken, one of my one of my clients came to me and they wanted to register a company. So I told them that, no, if you want to register a company, that's good. Then they said, I want to register with my wife. I want to give. The wife wanted to grant for 50%. But when I said to the husband, why are you actually giving her 50%? And uh, he eventually said, no, I'm going to give a, a 20. Then I say, do you actually know the implications of giving this person 20%? Yes, it's your wife, but do you know the implications which are involved? It simply means that you've given away 20% of the, the control of the company. So he, he, uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, he gave that 20% to the wife. So after giving the 20%, uh, this guy uh, caught also his wife cheating. Then this this gentleman actually owned a school uh, with everything, paperwork. So the school was actually on their residential property. Uh, then they converted it to a commercial, converted it into a school. Then they also owned a property where they were actually staying together. Hence, the wife was now gunning for the property. Is uh, This guy, when he caught the wife rent-handed, he tried to sue uh, the boyfriend. Uh, and uh, as he was suing the boyfriend, trying to push for damages from the boyfriend, the wife went to the, to the, I think it's done in the high court, the divorces. Then when it was now in the high court, um, the, 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 the wife actually went to the high court and the husband was too late to get it to the high court. They tried to challenge the matter. But when he noticed that he was about to lose, you know, you're, if you've got good lawyers, they can tell you that we're never going to win this case. So he decided to have a outside uh, the court settlement. So they had a, a settlement outside the courts, whereby he gave up their matrimonial home. And uh, because he was, he was protecting the business, he had invested almost $85,000 loan into the business. So he was about to lose everything. So he said, I would rather protect the whole business, uh, rather than giving away my business. So he gave away his matrimonial home and he went to rent. Start renting. Imagine starting to rent after about 25 years owning a house. Yeah, that's bad. That's bad. Then this is what happened, uh, to cut the long story short. Uh, but how could he have avoided this scenario also? Okay. You find that with the issue of companies, if there are two or more parties whereby there's a relationship based on um, 
capital, expertise, or even friendship, we encourage a shareholders agreement. It should be there in writing. But you find that your case whereby there is this issue of a couple, family trust is always ideal. Why? Because you want to make sure, you want to avoid a necessary dispute that can arise in future. Because you find with the family trust, you tend to specify your terms. That, okay, if something is to go wrong, if someone's cheat, or if there is supposed to be a divorce, that person seems to be a trustee. And your property is, is handled in the, in the family trust. So you find that a family trust, it can own movable and movable properties. It can, it can own shares in a company. So in this case, if you had your family trust, and then uh, the family trust was owning the property, the family trust is owning the company then you find that there was no such thing that was going to happen. But also you have the other cases whereby there are companies whereby they are registered with um, partners who are friends, who are friends mm-hmm. those who contribute capital or who are based on expertise. Because what happens is maybe we can finish college and say, okay, let's form a company exactly. together. It usually happens. In out of excitement, because we have great ideas. And, uh, and there's make, no money. There's so no, no money. one is yes, greedy. Uh, guys, let's work together. And some people will be saying, okay, we've been together for the past three years or five years. Nothing has happened. We encourage a shareholders agreement. Because the shareholders agreement, it protects the shareholders, it protects the company. Everything must be stated in writing. That, okay, if we're going to make a profit, how are we going to share? Our dividends, when are we going to declare them? And at what rate? In the case that there's a deadlock, someone is saying left, so that one saying right. Mm. How are you going to solve such a deadlock? Okay. Let's say one decides to pull out in the company. What are your terms? What's going to happen to those shares? So everything must be in black and white. It must be signed. Okay. Yes. That's good. So what about in terms of changing ownership? Because I've, I've had encounters whereby people contemplate moving uh, the assets from, let's say I'm owning an, a house and uh, I have a title deed, but I want to move that house inside the trust. How do I go about it? Because most of the people, they are worried about the process of doing so. All right. Uh, that process is called conveyancing. Uh, you find if you have your existing property, you want to change it, there's the conveyancing. It's done by lawyers. Yes. So with conveyancing, we are looking at um, the value of the property. So there should be an independent valuator who has to value your property. Uh, say it's worth 100,000 USD. Then there are gazetted rates, which are gazetted by the, the law from the Ministry of Justice. They are actually law, even the law of society, which is under the Ministry of Justice. So there are gazetted rates, uh, which they highlight as a percentage, which is going to be charged for the value of the property. So the lawyers, they do the paperwork because you find that the property will be in your name. It has to go to the family trust. So that paperwork is done. And then there's the stamped duty which you also need to pay to be paid to the registrar side. There's a rate as well in the fee for that. So the pro- process of converting, that's conveyancing. So once the paperwork is done by the lawyers, you pay that flat fee which are going to be charged, and then they're able to do that process. The, the property is changed from your name to the trust name. But also there is the capital gains tax which is involved. We're looking at if your property was purchased before uh, 22 February uh, 2019, you have to pay 5%, mm. and if it's after, it's 20%. Mm. So capital gains tax has to be factored. Okay, it's well. factored, okay. Yes. Okay. Ah, so that's great. So I think, okay, probably, is it for the rich? Because as Africans, we think probably it's for the rich. It's not for us. Uh, it's not for someone who's owning one property. It's not someone who's owning cars. It's for the multimillionaires. Those are the people who are supposed to start trust. Is it true? No, it's not. Family trust is open to everyone. Yeah. Even if you don't have a property. Because you find that opportunities do come. Exactly. They come at any time. At any kind of time. Right now, you've got an opportunity, uh, Mr. Jerry, just to buy a property. Exactly. There's a property which has come in and it's cheap. You have the money. You're going to buy it. And you put it in your name. In your name. Because you didn't have a trust. You didn't have a trust. And so, if you're going to put it in your name, you're going to incur those costs. And now. it's not a necessary cost. Imagine 5% of uh, a, a property for 500000 That's a lot of That's money. That's a lot of money. But let's say if I had my family trust, 
uh, there's an opportunity which comes in, I can just directly uh, purchase that property and then put it in the family trust. You avoid those costs. And even there's the issue of inheritance taxes. Because if a property is in your name and you just pass away, you find that it has to go to the master, then uh, the children will have to incur the costs. Whoever is going to inherit that property, they'll end up paying the lawyers because the, the change of ownership will still need to be done. But you find that if you have a family trust, you avoid inheritance taxes because already it's under the family. Okay. Yes. So you find that you're not going to leave a burden to the children. So it's, if you can do it, then it's better for you to do it while you're still alive. Okay. Yes. Interesting. So I think uh, you guys have had, I think uh, this was more educational. We want our Africans to be open-minded. We don't need to be, to stay behind. I think we've got a lot of companies, big companies, which are there, especially bus companies, uh, transport companies. I, 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 today, I think I also had a meeting with a transporter. The way we handle our business, the way we don't structure our business, by also planning for the future, it's crippling the continuity of that business because we're never going to be here forever. It simply means that, and if you ask someone, everyone will ask, they'll say, I'm working for my children. But people, they don't go further and plan and make sure that the children are protected. So I, I understand that issues like uh, having a trust uh, available for yourself and your family is something which you can procrastinate. It's something which you can say, I'll do it. I still have time. But let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have time. Tomorrow, we are here on earth. Uh, today we are here on earth. Tomorrow we might disappear. So this was uh, Mr. Andrew Tichakunda Macheka, who is the managing partner at MNJ. What about if uh, people they want to also register some trust through your company? I understand that you guys now have legal practitioners. If what experts who can do in that, what do they have to do? Okay, uh, they can get in touch um, through our email, which is uh, info at MJ Consultants. Consultants with NTS at the end, dot co dot zw, or uh, Andrew at MJ Group dot Africa, or they can even uh, contact us on our um, uh, phone number, which is zero seven one eight seven nine one zero four two. Okay, so thank you so much. I really appreciate you for coming. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching this. Uh, educational podcast which is called jailbreak africa today i didn't have steve tazoka but you join us in next week for the at the same time so please remember to destroy that sub, sub, subscribe button remember to share this video remember to con to call to comment and also you can share with us the stories which you might know or you can tell us whoever is in a problem because they didn't actually register trust so that we can help each other as Africans. We, in, whether you're in Harare, whether in Lusaka, whether in Lu Luanda, whether you're in Lu Lilongwe, whether you're in Pretoria, this is a podcast which is coming to you to educate you, to open your mind, to make sure that we call it Jobberg Africa, whereby we say we want to emancipate yourself, ourselves from our mindset which is poverty-related. So thank you so much. Until next time, it's Jerry Monyazungu, the chartered vendor, out. Thank you.